Welcome to Throttle Stop Garage. In today's episode, we're going to have a look at getting the carbon fiber frame made for the trunk skin that we made in episode 56. I'm super happy with these molds. Uh, they're probably the best molds that I've made so far. Uh, I was really careful with the application this time. <laughs> Uh, I hope, I hope, I hope uh, that uh, the release and the sealant and everything has worked out fine. I was super, super careful with their application this time. I made, as far as I know, I made no mistakes. I took a day to do each step, well, an evening right after work. Uh, so with that done, I primed the molds. I'll show two seconds of priming the molds uh, in this video. It's priming a mold, folks. And now it's time to get the carbon fiber materials put in. So for each one of these molds, we don't need uh, a whole ton of strength. It's not the same as some of the other parts that I've built in the past. We'll just be putting in three layers of the harness weave material that I have. Uh, so that's actually a fairly heavyweight material at 370 grams per square meter. It's not a lightweight material and, and three is probably overkill. For each of the stressed areas on these parts, we'll be adding an additional two layers of that 370 gram per square meter harness weave material just to add. So that would be five layers. Now I've tested it. Five layers is, it's as stiff as, as, as stiff gets. So that should be sufficient based on uh, sort of polling the audience of professionals that do this. Uh, DIY carbon fiber, thanks again, gentlemen. Uh, anyway, we'll, we'll add those extra two layers in here where the catch goes and we'll add the other uh, two layers up here at the corners where the hinge goes on the other mold. Uh, and that should be sufficient. Now, each one of these molds, uh, I don't, I'm limited in space. I don't even know where I'm going to put this stuff when I'm done, but I'm going to try to lay them up over this weekend and get this frame finally finished. Thank you, Lord Jesus, get me out of making molds. All right, uh, it's not the most fun part of making carbon fiber. Making the molds is a ton of work. Don't don't kid yourself. It's a ton of work. As promised, here's the quick version of how we actually get this done. You're you'll notice the sort of beige tape that's going down that's some old school masking tape that i have in the shop and uh, the first sign that i thought things were going to go well with the release was that the green masking tape would not stick uh, it just wouldn't hold but the uh, the older um, beige stuff it stuck in so on we go with those uh, bits of primer and then this is how it all turned out super happy again just even at this stage you can see there the overspray uh, where the tape just simply wouldn't stick to the mold. So that's that's going to be my new uh, my new top tip. If you're having trouble with the st the tape sticking, then the part's probably going to come out of the mold well. So that's excellent. Uh, and then I lost all the video on loading the mold. So nothing special with that. Uh, I because I've got a nice wide flange on this one, I was able to uh, put the the tacky tape on second. Uh, so that's fine. There's the three layers. You can see the two layers in the middle where the catch goes. I also had to fill it some of the corners because I couldn't get the fabric to lay in. Uh, it was bridging ar around the corner. So I just stuffed some extra spare bits of fabric I had into the corners just because I knew it was going to bridge, uh, which means it's not going to contact the mold surface, right? So we want to get that to make sure that that's all fine. Anyway, so all those go in and a little bit of the flow mesh goes on not a ton and then we're going to feed straight across this mold so we're going to pull from one side to the other taking the shortest path as always now the one thing i really wish i hadn't have done with this mold i cut it to sort of look a little bit like a skateboard top or something uh i i will leave my mold square probably from now on Anyway, stick the corners uh, down first and then begin working your way around with the pleats. Again, this part, more area needed a, all the way around the edge. You can see the bag is quite a bit larger, but this was as small as I think I would go. I, I would probably cut this bag a little bigger in future, which seems crazy the first time you're doing it. You just think, wow, this is so much bagging material. It's not really. It gets vacuumed in. It's got to go all the way around that mold and have enough slack to allow you to sort of press and position which is uh, what I'm doing now 
So you'll see that bag kind of going up and down and up and down, and that's because I'm positioning the bag. So I'm releasing the vacuum, positioning the bag, just to make sure that it's all everywhere that I need it. And that's the infusion, folks. Just took a few minutes. <laughs> the, uh, when I started in on the rest of the frame, this sort of bigger hoop of the frame, I measured all the fabric, you know, they were, I just weighed it there and made sure I was going to do this all properly. Uh, fit it in as carefully as you can. Uh, I, I didn't have any problems with it when it came out, so that was good. Um, anyway, so that all went in pretty lickety split. It didn't take a whole, I mean, this only took a day to load both molds. Now you can see the other mold actually is sitting up on the hood of the car, and it's uh, that was already infused and clamped off. And it was drying, right? So, or hardening. Sorry, epoxy doesn't dry, it hardens. Uh, totally different process. Anyway, so flow mesh goes on, and then the bag goes in. Now, this one was tricky because, again, the shape of this thing is crazy with uh, right angles. And I've never done anything like this before. So, uh, the bagging material goes in. Uh, again, trying to figure out where the best place is to put the pleats. Uh, right, so there's the first vacuum pull. Again, a really good sign if you uh, if it pulls down tight fast, you know it's going to be good. All right, all the infusions well underway and it's looking really good. So the uh, perimeter uh, method seems to work fine. mostly thanks to the awesome clamps boy they work good for this part I decided to infuse from the outside in in a big U and then use the entire center as my resin block the entire process took about two hours total uh, but it seems to work well okay so it was a very long day at work today because I couldn't focus because at home I had both molds ready to go waiting for me to uh, unmold them all right so it's Monday uh, we did this uh, particular mold Saturday, the other one we did on Sunday, so this one's been sitting two days, the other one's been sitting for a full day, and we're going to see if we get parts out. I decided to change the amount of resin that I was using, the, the multiplier, from 1.5 to 1.3, and I was left with, each time, almost nothing left in the, uh, the resin pot. So I'm pretty happy with that, I wasn't scared that I wasn't going to get it all infused. Uh, but I have created a whole lot less waste. I will measure that waste and I'll put the waste for both parts up here right now. Thanks to viewer suggestions, but I've purchased one of the wedges that you blow air into. So we're going to give this a try. Everyone keeps saying, why don't you use air to pop your molds? I don't know. No good reason. I didn't have one. Got one now. Okay, so that's the hatch pot released cutting them off like trees in the forest. The last time it did not go well. It did not go well. I'm not trying to fool anybody with any of this stuff. It's not Hollywood. Hey, I'm just one guy in my garage. It's just you and me. So we'll see how we do. Sometimes we're gonna fail. That's just life, right? I have never failed and not learned. I have succeeded and not learned. So you learn more from your failures normally. We try to limit them, but you do what you can do. I still remember trying to get this stuff off the first mold. So remember, you gotta pull it hard and fast, or it won't come off. Peel fly. Again, the blue color that you see, uh, I'll show you here, just give me a few seconds color that you see in these lines is uh, just that glue that's the MT1 fiber tack glue that I'm using to adhere the layers as I'm building the stack and it's just dissolving in the epoxy and coming out so that's why those are blue about that. Only a Canadian would apologize for his compressor. Oh, 
Did you hear that? I didn't hear it either. No cracks, no pops, no anything. Wow, well, we'll take that, folks. Wow. Holy. Is that ever nice? Okay. That'll make you believe making carbon fiber parts isn't as crazy as other people say it is. I remember it was a lot of fun to get the steel part out. So we're gonna judge all of this against the steel part. Cause that was no fun. Somebody told me just this morning about stacking the clamp or the wedges on the wedges. That worked. Look at that. Is it okay to laugh? Some of you think it's not okay to laugh. Why do I read the comment section? Woohoo! That is perfect. All right, with those parts done, we're gonna move on, get it cut and start gluing things together. So uh, just uh, quickly whip around. You can see I've got the vacuum out now, uh, sucking up all the dust as well as uh, I checked with 3M about the right mask to wear here. So uh, that's the correct mask, folks. So thank you very much for your comments, but uh, we're fine. Anyway, as I get going here, I'm going to be cutting out the slots and areas to make sure that I can get those glue on nuts put in place. Uh, now, they did need to get bent around a little bit and I'm going to show you that here. They closely fit the carbon fiber part and those should work just great. All right, I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to haul all this back inside because uh, I don't have a choice today. <laughs> and uh it's far too cold out here for this glue to work and we'll get it all glued up uh oh yeah the smaller ones are there and they needed no modification to work so excellent okay so in order to get those parts to fit in you'll see me sanding here the insides of the one part outsides of the other part it has to be the same thickness as the steel or else the two parts aren't going to fit together Okay, so a couple of tests into the mold, make sure they're going to work all right, and then we'll get it uh, we'll get it glued up. Now, I did make some mistakes with the sanding. I was a little bit overly aggressive with it and sanded through in a couple of spots, but some uh, carbon fiber chopped material and some of the glue solved that problem for me. Uh, right, so once we're all done, the next day we run a tap back through those threaded fasteners to make sure they're all nice and clear and then get going to try to get these two parts mated. Now, uh, first I sanded it all up. There you can see a little uh, shout out to Permagrit Tools in the UK. So they make a tungsten carbide sanding system uh, for carbon fiber. It worked really well. It takes, it takes a while, but um, you know, no, no point in rushing at this point. You might as well take your time and get it to fit nicely. So that's the frame done and then I just quickly whipped around the edge of the skin. Now the skin is not as critical to get it completely fitted because it needs to be fitted when I start doing body work. 
Um, now it probably took me about half of the day, <laughs> half of an entire day, so four hours to work out how to clamp this up. Uh, so <laughs> out the glue comes again and in we go to adhere the two parts together. So it was a really specific clamping system to get this done properly. You do not want to clamp the glue down so tightly that it squeezes all the glue out. So I started at the back edge and then worked to the corners. You'll notice that I'm doing this symmetrically, right? As one clamp goes in on one side, another clamp goes in on the other. Uh, and it's just each one of those pieces, I had to work out exactly how to do it so I could get uh, pretty much a perfect squeeze all the way around. You just want to squeeze it. You don't want to clamp the daylights out of it. Um, anyway, once this is done, I was I was not I was not running out of clamps. I have more, but holy, this is getting ridiculous. <laughs> but um, good entertainment all the way around. Then I clean up the edges because it's easier to do when the glue is not yet hardened than it is when the glue is hard. All right, so here we are in the next day. Uh, it's been clamped up overnight, and yes, it was Black Friday the other day, and I did have to go out and buy a few more clamps. <laughs> so uh, that's as many clamps as I think I've ever had on a part in my life. Uh, so we can't get to the car through the garage, so we'll have to go outside and around and see how well this trunk fits. So I have no idea <laughs> if this is going to work, uh, but let's see how it goes. I'm going to try to keep them in order. That was a very uh, careful process of putting them all on. And I made extensive use of the temperature, the thermal temperature gauge. You can see I've got my uh, space heater in again. wanted to make sure that the temperature was up in the right range to allow the epoxy to actually harden. Uh, the frame total by the way, uh, double check on that, One, 1.7 kilos uh, versus the original frame which was 4.75. get down to that smile point where you start putting the clamps off and you're like, is this still there? Wow. It's, it's not a total lightweight unit, I'll tell you that, but um, I, you could stand on this. Now, I know you could. Don't! But you could. Okay, with that, let's uh, get it outside, get it fit on the car. Sorry about the lighting and the squinting, the sun's right there. Uh, anyway, totally happy here, actually. This is, uh, it's looking really good. We uh, fit up into the car, fits really well. It's just right up against the rubber here, the bottom. And like it will need to get fit in uh, during body work to make it perfect, but Actually, it's really good. So up here, I'm just gonna, I'll zoom you in and, and take you for a quick tour. Uh, the sun's gone down. We can have a better look at the fit. So again, as I was saying before, pretty happy with how it all has turned out. Um, you can see here, oh, truck's gonna come this way and touch. It's just, it's just little bits of fitting. Like it's tight here, got some gap there. Alright, so we've got a little bit of fiddling around to do and you know we'll do that during body work. In the meantime, like the lines are all good. Like this is too the end of the trunk's too long, but you know, once it's up there the curve is right. That fits pretty good. Yeah, generally speaking, happy with that. Okay. All right, that's a wrap for the trunk process, the entire thing. It's it's now finished. There's nothing left to do except for the final shaping and fitting, and that'll happen at the bodywork stage. I, I will touch up the primer when I get around to getting all the rest of this stuff done. When the next time I have primer in the gun, uh, I'll get around to getting that thing primed. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us on this particular video and, and for the whole adventure. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you on the next video.